Like I said in my previous video, sowing seeds is all about preparation. I like to get all of my tags, plant tags, written out before I sow the seeds because you're not gonna wanna stop every time you're sowing a different type of seed, and get a pencil and write tags. So I just try to get them all done at once. Um, you can see I've got all these ones laid out. I've decided I'm gonna sew them. Um, I like these uh, white tags like this. They're really nice and rigid. Um, they do get old and brittle, but right now they won't break. Um, and there's a rough side and a smooth side to these. So always check for the rough side. If you can't tell with your fingers, actually your lip usually can tell, so I was rubbing on my lips sometimes. It looks weird, but it's useful. Your lips are very sensitive. When you're writing tags, always use a pencil. Never use permanent markers. Almost every new plant person, every new employee we've ever had has wanted to use permanent markers because it does look so neat and tidy so convenient and it says it's permanent right on there they are not permanent after about six months eight months tops it's gonna wear right off the tag and you won't be able to tell what you've written um, and do write tags lots of us think we're gonna remember what we've done especially if you're only doing two or three different kinds but let me tell you I've been doing this for 30 years you'll forget you'll forget something so write it on down and it's less to keep up in your little plant brain anyways so We'll do this one here, Saracenia Ember by Minor Giant. And I'm just going to write that on this tag with a nice pencil. I'm also going to write the date on there. I think it's the 16th. That'll be close enough. So 1, 16, 22 already. Jeez. So that's usually all I put on the tag. That way, later I can see when I sowed the seeds. Sometimes that's good information when I'm wondering, like, you know, why haven't these sprouted yet? Has it been long enough? And you can go and check. And then later, when you're potting them up after you've had great success, you want to know how old they are. So I put that on there. And then I'll just keep it right here with my old packet. I've got a lot of these to do. Got a lot of tags, a lot of packets. Um, but when I get done with this, we're gonna start actually sowing seeds on soil. Exciting! Welcome back to another episode of our California Carnivores Ultimate Seed Sowing Guide. And guess what? Today, we're actually gonna plant seeds. Oh my God! If you've been watching the whole thing, you're probably 30 minutes deep and you're wondering when is this guy gonna actually plant some seeds? Here we go. So have our what's going to be a stratification chamber and eventually a germination chamber we're basically going to have them all sprout inside here i've got my pots all filled um, i've sterilized the soil everything 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 that i wanted to do and like i said you want to be persnickety with your preparation so that you're not working on problems later that are hard to solve so inside here i've got all my pots one of my good tips is you could just leave these all in here and sprinkle your seeds right where they are. There's a really way more likelihood of cross-contamination that way. If it's sitting right next to the other pot, it's way more likely for a couple seeds to bounce in and then get mixed up. You know, most plant people are persnickety like me and it's all about keeping things in the lines. So I always take the pot out. The next thing you're gonna do is um, get the tag in there. So I've got all of these seeds. I've pre-written all my tags. That's a lot of work to do. Um, we're just gonna show a couple today. So let's see, I'll grab the first one. These are Saracenia Minor Giant by Saracenia Flava variety Rugelii, Bob Hanrahan. Basically, really cool giant by giant cross. They should be like three feet tall and minor by flava crosses are pretty cool. Pieces of paper. Well, before we even get to that, take a look at your pot. Make sure that there's no big chunks of perlite to get in the way of little seedlings. Make sure that there are no gaps. See that gap? If I'm sprinkling the seeds, a lot of times they'll fall in there. So I always really go around and push the sides to make sure that there's no little crevasses for the seeds to fall down into because they're obviously not gonna sprout if they're down there. 
put the tag in first. Once you sprinkle all the seeds, sometimes you'll go to do it and you're like, oh, geez, or whatever. And you can um, push seeds down in with the tag. So put the tag in next. There we go. Then a uh, piece of paper. It's the magical tool that we use for almost all seed work here. Just a plain piece of paper folded in half. Keep it dry. There's a lot of water around here, but you do want to keep it dry because seeds stick to my paper. And these are what a little American pitcher plant seeds look like. Just like that. And it's actually, you see how I'm laying them out in a line like that? There's a reason for that. That's good. It's hard to know how many. Sometimes I'll hold a few back in case something terribly goes wrong. The mice seed all these seeds and these are really near and dear to me. Sometimes hold a few back and that way if something goes wrong, you have a few more to try. Okay, there it is. Tag is in and the seeds are in line. So what I'm gonna do is just tap them down this little fold in the paper and put them exactly where I want them. And you can watch that. That's why I put them in a line. If it's one big cluster, they're just gonna all fall out at the same time. But you can watch this magic trick of them marching down the paper like brave little soldiers. To become new American pitcher plants. And see, I'll put those right there. Then you're just looking for a pretty good, even distribution of seeds all over the entire pot. And if I tap really hard, see more come out. If I tap really slowly, then they go slower. Also, the angle of the paper is important. See, I just barely have it angled. If you come at this like this, they're all gonna just fall off. So just barely a little incline, or decline. <laughs> and then just sprinkle, sprinkle, sprinkle. Tapping thoroughly all the way around to make sure that even the corners, all this space. I mean, if you're a crazy person like me, you probably filled up all your space with plants a long time ago. And space is one of those uh, precious resources that plant people never seem to have enough of. So, you know, use this whole pot. And I can usually put about 200 seeds or so into a pot this size. So, and then a bunch in the center. Boom, boom, boom. So see like that, that's really nicely spread out. There's a few that are right next to each other. That's okay. It's not about that. And then we're just gonna take it and put it right back in here. Now you can wait till they're all sown, but just to show you, now you wanna mist these in. So we've sterilized the soil. It doesn't make sense to use dirty rainwater off your roof for this. It's good for it to be as clean as possible. Even if you're using rainwater, I would go buy a um, gallon of real distilled water because it'll come completely sterile. And if you pour it into this bottle pretty quickly, you won't end up with too many moss spores or algae or anything like that in there. You don't wanna just add a whole bunch of stuff in your water. Um, and then you can also put two tablespoons of hydrogen peroxide, the 3% dilution. It comes, you know, their dilution that you buy is called 3% dilution hydrogen peroxide. And we're gonna dilute that even further and take two tablespoons of that and put that into this um, spray bottle, which is a liter of water. And then we're just gonna mist them in. And I did the hydrogen peroxide because it's just a little bit cleaner, just like your wounds. It's gonna kill bacteria and it's gonna kill fungal spores and keep it a little bit cleaner, but it won't hurt our seeds. Another thing is watch how I'm misting it. I don't like this. If I do that, they're gonna jump. You saw them move? Don't do that. In fact, I don't like that. Stink. <laughs> you can kind of gently move them with your finger if you need to, just like that. But they'll stick to a wet finger too, so be careful. You can use that for you or against you. You can kind of lick your finger and move it around a little bit. And sometimes the seed just let it stuck. So what I'm gonna do is mist from here, see? And I'm letting it fall down and then not really disturbing the seeds. I'm just gonna do that a whole bunch. This is gonna have water in it too, and so it's gonna get wet. But it's good to start them off right away wet. And there we go. You never bury any carnivorous plant seeds. So you're just gonna sprinkle them right there on the surface like that, and don't worry um, about sprinkling anything on top of them, any sand, top dressing, anything like that. They're gonna sprout right on the surface. And always keep these sitting, just like other grown-up carnivorous plants, keep them, the pot sitting in about two inches of very pure distilled rainwater. Well, 
We'll still have a few more things to talk about sowing seeds, but that'll at least get you started. Stay tuned for the other things that we're going to talk about, a few fine points, um, growing the pinthies from seeds. Um, we're just going to really delve into this. So follow below to see what we're up to. Thanks so much for um, learning about seeds with me, and I hope you're really inspired and excited to go make some carnivorous plant babies of your own. <laughs>